Beta oxidation is a process in which we break down fatty acids to yield energy in the form of ATP. But what are fatty acids and where are they coming from? Remember that we have lipids, also known as fats, and these are made up of both glycerol and fatty acids. Here we have a general structure of what a lipid could look like. We have a glycerol backbone, and then we have our fatty acids. Here we have three fatty acids, so we refer to it as triacylglycerol. But remember, we could have two fatty acids, and we could have a phosphate head group over here. We could have one fatty acid. And also remember that fatty acids can be of varying lengths. They could have a different number of hydrogens uh, and carbons. They could be saturated or unsaturated. They could be trans or cis. Here, we're just showing a general structure of what a lipid could look like to understand beta oxidation. So we have our triacylglycerol or whatever our lipid may be, and we break it down into its components via a lipase enzyme into glycerol and fatty acids. Now what's gonna happen is that these fatty acids are going to be broken down for energy. Glycerol can also be broken down into energy, but here we're concerned with fatty acids. Now, where is beta oxidation going to occur? Beta oxidation is going to occur in your mitochondrial matrix. Now, what's important to understand is that since fatty acids can be of different lengths and different saturations, some fatty acids are unable to cross the double membrane of the mitochondria without the help of a protein transporter, specifically the carnitine shuttle. Here, we're not going to go over the carnitine shuttle or how coenzyme A is attached to acyl-CoA. <clears throat> that will be for another video. Here, we're just going to take a look at how this fatty acid is broken down. So here we have our fatty acid. And if we take a look, this represents the fatty acid structure. And what we've done is we've replaced the hydroxyl with a coenzyme A group. So, and this R just represents the number of carbons that we have. We could have 11 carbons, 10, 12, however many it may be. And overall, this is referred to as an acyl-CoA, where we had our fatty acid and we've added a CoA group. Now, the reason we call this beta oxidation is because we are interested in the alpha and beta carbon. So when we have our carbonyl, right next to the carbonyl is our alpha and then our beta carbon. Now, here we are trans and we are unsaturated. So the hydrogens, they are on opposite sides. This is not a cis structure where they are on the same side. And we are saturated. So what's, the first step is going to be that we need to create a double bond between these two carbons, and it'll make sense. But how do we do that? We need to, to, we need to do an oxidation reduction reaction, a redox reaction. And whenever we are thinking about an oxidation reduction reaction, oftentimes we are using a dehydrogenase and FAD or NAD will be taking part. That's how we can remember that it's a dehydrogenase enzyme because it's a redox reaction. We can remember that it's acyl-CoA dehydrogenase because acyl-CoA is also in the name of the reactant. And then what's happening is that we are going to reduce FAD into FADH2. And as a result, we are going to be oxidizing uh, this bond over here. And we're going to get a double bond as a result. And it's going to be called trans-delta-2 enol-CoA because we have this ene bond over here. Now, once we have this trans-delta-2 enol-CoA, the first step was an oxidation step, oxidation reduction reaction. Next, we are going to do a hydration. And this is really important because hydration introduces a hydroxyl group, which will eventually become another carbonyl. Now, this reaction is catalyzed by enol-CoA hydratase. Hydratase, because remember, this step is a hydration. And enol-CoA, that name is also found in the reactant for this step. As a result, we get the introduction of a hydroxyl group and we have a single bond once again. Remember, we started off with a single bond. We did an oxidation reduction, so we got a double bond. And now we're back to a single bond. This is called hydroxyacyl-CoA. Now, hydroxyacyl-CoA is going to undergo a oxidation reduction reaction 
and this time it is NAD+, which is getting reduced into NADH. Once again, we have a dehydrogenase, because whenever we are concerned with oxidation reduction reactions, oftentimes it's just a dehydrogenase enzyme. And the enzyme specifically in this case is beta-hydroxyacyl-CoA dehydrogenase. As a result, we get ketoacyl-CoA. A key thing to make note of of ketoacyl-CoA is look what we did. On that beta carbon, we've generated a carbonyl. What did we start off with? We started off with just a hydrogen, okay? Then we, we, after having that hydrogen, we had that double bond formed between the alpha beta carbon. We introduce a hydroxyl, and then we create a carbonyl. The, these steps of creating a double bond, introducing a hydroxyl, creating a carbonyl, this is a very common stepwise reaction found within biochemistry. It's very common. You, will, you see this in the TCA cycle as well. So we have this ketoacyl-CoA. The next step, we are using a thiolase for a thiol thiolysis reaction in which we are introducing a coenzyme A group. Why are we introducing a coenzyme A group? Because what we're gonna be do we would be doing is we're gonna be splitting this ketoacyl-CoA. We're gonna be taking those first two carbons, splitting them right over here. We get acetyl-CoA as a product, and then the remaining acyl-CoA. Remember, Fatty acids are of varying lengths. What we just did was we removed carbon and we we removed two carbons, and now the acyl CoA that's left over will be two carbons shorter. Now, so what's the product of first round of beta oxidation? First round of beta oxidation, we get an acetyl CoA, we get the remaining acyl CoA. What's gonna happen to this acetyl CoA? It's gonna go on to the TCA cycle. Then it's going to produce FADH, NADH, uh, FADH2, and NADH, which are going to go into the electron transport chain to yield energy. Now, what about this acyl-CoA? This acyl-CoA is going to go through another cycle of beta oxidation until we have no more carbons left. So what was the purpose of adding this carbonyl? We wanted to regenerate that acyl-CoA. We, we cleaved right over here. This was our acetyl-CoA. We were left over with all of this, so we had to add in a coenzyme A group over here to regenerate acyl-CoA, what we started with, but remember, two carbons shorter. So the whole purpose of beta oxidation is to produce acetyl-CoA and break down that fatty acid until we are no longer left with any carbons. So to quickly recap, we had our oxidation reduction reaction. We had that dehydrogenase enzyme. We produced FADH2. This FADH2 will go on to the electron transport chain to produce ATP. Then we hydrated. Why did we hydrate? Because we wanted to introduce a hydroxyl and then convert that hydroxyl into a carbonyl because we are regenerating acyl-CoA. And in the final step, we have our coenzyme A group that is attached to that acyl-CoA we're two carbons shorter, we produced an acetyl-CoA. And that is essentially beta-oxidation. It's a process in which we break down fatty acids to yield energy. And beta-oxidation will occur in rounds, and each round is composed of these four steps that we went over until all of the, fat, all of the carbons are used up in the fatty acid. What's really important to note over here is that in this example, we did a general fatty acid which has unsaturated uh, bonds, so it's completely saturated, it has trans bonds. Beta oxidation will defer if you have cis bonds and if you have saturated bonds, and we'll go over those differences uh, in reactions in separate videos. It's also important to remember that in this example of what we're going over, we're assuming that the fatty acid is made up of an even number of carbons. So let's say you have 14 carbons. You have 14 carbons. How many acetyl-CoA's are you going to get? Well, each acetyl-CoA is made up of two carbons, so you're going to get seven acetyl-CoA's, right? But if we have 15 carbons, we, that's an odd number, so you're gonna your final round of beta oxidation is gonna give you an odd numbered molecule, and that is also gonna have a separate process. Here we just went over even numbered uh, fatty acid chains and how they're gonna produce acetyl CoA.